why would I bother with this if I can do the same actions with a mouse and a keyboard? Seven months ago, that was my first thought when the MX Creative Console first came out. But once I started having it on my desk, this quickly became the next best thing since coffee for boosting productivity. It initially did not support Final Cut Pro, but that support has now been added and I've been using it for video editing ever since. It is true that some of the actions you perform with the console could also be done using keystrokes on your keyboard, but I've got 10 workflow upgrades using this, which absolutely beats using mouse and keyboard in Final Cut Pro. It's both a combination of speed and just being more intuitive in terms of interface. One of the simplest, but also my favorite workflow hacks is being able to quickly change between workspace layouts using the actions ring. I simply hold down this button to call up the actions ring and release my cursor towards the workspace I need. Without the actions ring, I would typically change this through the drop down menu under window, workspaces, and then I'd click on the workspace I want. Though it is also entirely possible to assign this to slots on your keypad so you can change workspaces with the push of a button. Though I feel that the actions ring is a more suitable home for this because it's one of those high level toggles you'd prefer to have in the same spot every single time. The second thing I wanted to talk about also lives on my actions rings and it's how I can do all my primary color corrections from there. I'll start by adding a color wheel effect to this clip. It's one button on my dial pad. And if I give the button for actions ring a short press, it calls up the actions ring and it hangs around until I press the button again. So at nine and three o'clock, I've got my controls for my color temperature as well as my tint. And between those shadow, midtones, and highlights. All I've got to do now is simply hover my cursor over what I like to adjust and turn the dial. So let's say I wanted to brighten my midtones up a little, boost my highlights and cross show shadows by just a bit. I'll head on over to color temperature to warm this up and it's looking a bit green. So I'll dial my tint towards the right to add a bit of magenta. What's a bit crazy about this is I can do this even while in full screen mode. So I've got a huge picture to look at and I am dialing my image in by just hovering my cursor and turning a dial. But say I'd like to now drag and drop a new clip of B-roll from a folder onto the timeline. More often than not, that clip of B-roll would typically be buried under something closer to 72 layers of subfolders. Got the wrong one and there it is. So if there is a specific folder which you'd frequently go back to, for example, that folder with all your active projects, it's possible to configure your keypad to open that folder with a single button press. This action is called open folder and you can specify the exact path to call up in Finder. So if it's a frequent enough folder worth setting up for, I can skip straight to my B-roll folder, for example, with just the keypad. You might not even need to assign this into the FCP profile on your keypad because you could instead leave this in the first page of the generic profile and access it by holding down the left navigation button and this would temporarily peek you into the general profile and you might prefer launching anything else including that folder from there. The next few hacks are all based on a very powerful set of actions called nudge. When I activate the nudge horizontally toggle on my keypad, turning the dial nudges the clip I've currently selected either left or right, depending on which direction I'm turning the dial by increments of one frame. This is great for when you need frame accurate adjustments, for example, when syncing audio waveforms. But for audio specifically, one frame might actually not be precise enough. So you can see I'm trying to line these two up and it's smack in the middle of two frames, which is why there is also an action for nudge audio subframes, which gives you an insane degree of granularity when you need it. So look at how much I'm turning this wheel and it's barely just moving this in. So what I usually do is go one frame and just use this to really fine tune that in. So there we go. And that is lined up. Number five is one of my personal favorites and it's combining the trim tool with the nudge action. 
You know when you've got the trim tool active and you drag a clip to change its in and out points, Final Cut shows you what the first and last frames look like, but if you need to know what somewhere in the middle of that clip looks like as you are applying trim, it's more or less trial and error. But say I position my trim cursor exactly where I want to see my action happen, as long as the clip is actively selected, I can nudge the clip and see the exact frame where my cursor is in my viewer. Something else that nudging works wonders on are keyframes. It's my go-to method for adjusting audio keyframes now, so I'm just placing and jumping between keyframes using my keypad here, and when I want to make an adjustment, I'll use the nudge vertically toggle this time to, with my dial pad, change the value at one of these keyframes, or I can even highlight the segments between two keyframes and use this to change that value up or down. If you're applying transform to a clip, for example, I want to use rotate to straighten this clip that's not a level. If you click and drag it with your mouse or you click to highlight it, then use your scroll wheel to notch it up or down. This typically changes the value in one unit increments. However, if you leave it highlighted like this, then use nudge vertically on it, your dial pad can control it in one unit increments. It's almost like having access to a high precision mode for dialing a value in perfectly. Tip number eight is assigning all the common keyboard shortcuts which require a combination of key presses into a single labeled button. Some of these, like create compound clip, aren't actually terribly difficult keyboard shortcuts to remember in the first place, it's option G. I've also got show horizon, which replaces shift command H, which in my opinion is way too many key presses for something I toggle on and off very frequently. And then there's the ones which I straight up refuse to commit to memory. Toggling audio lanes to show or hide is set by default in FCP to Option Shift Command S. It is such a hassle of a key combination, I've always resorted to simply using my mouse and navigating over to index, roles, then clicking the actual button for showing and hiding audio lanes. But now it can be one button on my MX Creative keypad. Item number nine is something along the lines of this as well, but it's not for existing keyboard shortcuts. You see, there is actually a surprisingly extensive library of actions which can be bound to keystrokes in the FCP command set menu. Some of these actions are not bound to anything by default, so you actually need to make a brand new shortcut for them. However, instead of doing that and needing to remember yet another key combination that you just came up with, just assign it to a single labeled slot on your MX Creative keypad. I've personally got on mine a toggle for the custom overlay feature in the viewer, alongside a button I now cannot live without, and that's automatic speed, which with one tap, conforms the selected clip to the timeline's frame rate. So if say I've got 120p or 60p footage here, this automatically slows it down to 24 FPS to match my timeline. My final tip is using the vertical scroll wheel on the dial pad to adjust the height of clips in my timeline. The default mapping for vertical scroll is timeline zoom, but I've been used to mapping the thumb buttons on my MX Master mouse to zoom in and out, so the vertical scroll for height makes more sense in my opinion. There's also a waveform size toggle which I use together with this to change the ratio of the thumbnails and the audio waveform. So that was a collection of workflow upgrades which have taken my FCP experience beyond mouse and keyboard. Before support for FCP was released, I've been using this primarily for Lightroom, so if you're someone like me who already has the MX Creative console and edits in FCP, it is delightful newfound value. If you were considering one of these for editing in FCP, then it now makes a lot more sense that the official plugin is live. I've got links below if anyone's interested to check one out, and I'll be seeing you around.